Hey everyone, welcome back to Rally Caps. It's a podcast for artists, entrepreneurs, and everybody in between. I'm Steven. I'm Gene. And today we have a very, very special friend in the studio with us, Mr. Nolis Anderson. Hey, what's up, everybody? <laughs> what's going on, guys? Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. Thanks for being here, man. <laughs> Appreciate it. Man. Um, Nolis is a phenomenally talented photographer, creative director based here in Chicago. He also has a studio, much like we do, mm. called South Facing Windows, uh, also in the city. Um, he's here today doing us a favor, gracing us with his presence, <laughs> hanging out with favor. us. And uh, <laughs> we're here just to like, talk about his career as a photographer, what he did before that, um, early days, what he's up to right now, just like a really good, insightful look into, honestly, like a, a realm of photography that we are not as familiar yeah. with, yeah. to learn a little bit, to share some of that with you, and most importantly, just like display his portfolio to you guys, so. Oh, sick. Yeah, we're yeah, gonna kick cool. it, it's gonna be great. Starting with probably, your most prized possession, uh, your dinosaur baby camera. <laughs> yes, can you show the world, please? Yeah. So, <laughs> it's just next to you. <laughs> so one of my best friends got me this camera a couple of days ago, and it's just like a little baby toddler camera. It's like, wait, welcome. And it's sick. And it like it's like an instant camera, but it prints everything on receipt paper instead of... Uh, Instead of like, you know, Polaroids or whatever. And I've just been <laughs> playing with it for like days. Let me see. One thing. So boom. It just comes out just like that. It's, it's wild. It is so crisp. Yo, it's, it, it's so fast. It's, 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 it's so fast. fast. It's yeah. crazy. I've been That's having it. too much fun with this. So I've basically Man. been just taking pictures and just leaving these like everywhere <laughs> that I take pictures. So if you see little receipt papers with photos on them, it's probably me. <laughs> I love watching so. right before we were in the studio. You we were downstairs photographing the bathroom down there. I just watched you like print it out, yeah. put it on the mirror. I took a I picture. Like, That's I incredible. took a picture of the toilet and uh, <laughs> I put it on. A, I put it on the mirror so whoever sees it. I feel like this is not to make like a deep analogy out of this, but like honestly, like you coming in with that and using that and loving it so much, I feel like is kind of like reflective of your taste as an artist. Like mm -hmm. you like to kind of branch out and from what I can see online, like use things that are not like the norm and you like to go kind of like walk to your own beat and use different like creative tools that are just like not the the standard yeah, tools I that mean, people use. For like my fun, like my non work per se, more yeah. cameras, I definitely like to get, you know, more interesting pieces or or cameras that I like don't see like on a regular basis yep. or just like niche stuff like yeah, I've had a bunch of cameras before, like like random like half frames mm -hmm. that like I don't ever see people really having. Mm -hmm. Or I remember I had like this old like um, it was a Kony Omega, okay, uh, medium format camera. Oh, okay, mm. like a, it was like huge, it's like yeah. a huge press camera, but it shoots uh, six by seven film, and you advance the film by like cocking it it's not like a it's not like a this okay yeah it's just like a like a pulley and you like pull it out and you smash it back in it's super aggressive <laughs> and like very like solid but it's like it's like a it's like a very like satisfying feeling so you like yeah. take a photo you like click click yeah click, yeah click it's like a it's almost kind of like so it's very aggressive yeah but like stuff like that i love like finding like little, little different things like that and, yep. and just different accessories and, and different and different lenses so but yeah when she sent, she sent me this i like i've never seen this before yeah and i thought it was super cool and i'll probably be walking around with this for like the next six months probably so yeah. i mean i think like six of us in the studio are going to amazon this <laughs> you afternoon you should have seen us get your affiliate link ready send it <laughs> to us because i'm gonna buy the green version if you there's a green one i'm it. i should have put like a referral code up because you, <laughs> you should have saw the amount of people asking me like I where bet. i got this from no i believe a ton of people when you post on instagram probably yeah, asking my you, DMs, what is where that? i got this from <laughs> It was so funny. Not about your work, no. not about your other cameras, just like, that camera bro. specifically. You know, sometimes, man, it's about, you know, something. And that's the thing. Like, with this, man, it just reminds me just, like, you know, photography is supposed to be fun. It's mm -hmm. not always supposed to be about mm -hmm. work. And, you know, when you make your art your business, yeah. that can get, you know, that can get very confusing sometimes, mm -hmm. kind of, yeah. like, you know, what, what what you're actually doing. So these, these are, like, stuff like that. That's that's why, that's why I buy, like, little fun cameras and stuff like that on the side, just because it just kind of helps remind me and just kind of makes, you know, keeping, you know, photography fun and still a hobby. Yeah. As well as, as, well as like, my career also. Yeah. 
I feel like that's a pretty constant conversation we have at the studio too yeah. of like how do we create space for this to be a fun thing still and like how do we break out of the rhythms of just like churning out massive amounts of images especially like wedding backgrounds mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. it's just yeah it's it's such volume based stuff it's like how do you take a step back from that and yeah. just like have a little bit of space like to treat it like a hobby i think like just introducing film into our workflows was a big yeah, part of that 100%. uh just like it slows down it's different it generally speaking is more for us than our clients and that always feels great but i'm sleeping on the dinosaur camera that seems like a Dude, a nice, like, nice little addition. They have you, another one. It's like a pink whale. Oh, this oh, is like a blue dinosaur. Blue they have a pink whale. one. It's like a whale. I have like a little <laughs> tail on it. Sick. Do you still have? I did. I full dived on it. <laughs> I think one of the, uh, maybe not the last time you visited, but the time before that, you had your um, was it six by eight? The, the six the, by, the Fuji six by eight. Oh yeah, yeah. Do you still have that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm still working yeah. on a. I might get rid of it. Yeah. Just so I can get another camera. Yeah. I might get rid of it um, <laughs> at some point, but I'm actually doing like a, a long term uh, portrait okay. project with it. Cool. So I want to that, and I've only been using that camera, so I want to make sure I finish that if I ever finish it. But I want to make sure I finish that project um, before I like change hands. But For sure. yeah, I love that one. Like that's like you know everybody's like, what is it? The Texas Leica. Yeah. 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 That's yeah, usually yeah. the Texas Leica. Normally is the Fuji. Uh, 690, yeah, which right. is a six by okay. nine, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, this yeah, is the yeah. 680, so it's a six by eight, yep, ratio, yeah. which like I've never really super seen, super particular, yeah, yeah. And what, yeah. what is that? Is it's that like a six by eight, three by and four? then like those oh, are the Fujis four. were only like they were only those are the six by eights were only sold in Japan, so they're really hard to get. Oh, wow, okay, in America. So, they That's had cool. the 670s here and the 690s, but. The six eighties were only in Japan. So like I saw that I was like, oh, this is cool. So another one or like just like a weird camera that yeah. like you don't see too too often. So no. Yeah. You also blew my mind uh with the the dual range uh fifty that you had for oh, yeah, dude. For, so, man, that that no one's just like, thinks about cameras and differently than I think no, most people. It's like it's genuinely like very inspiring because I feel like a lot of stuff is like super cookie cutter. Yeah. And it's just it's yeah. really cool to to see someone who just like has fun with it and tries like different mediums and different versions and there you go. I lost there it. There it is. Second. Oh yeah. And this lens too. Oh, yeah. So this yeah. Whole setup. So another not as common camera. So this is the M ten D. Yep. So it's basically like an M ten P with no digital screen on it. So it's digital camera without a digital screen, which is stupid, but <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy it. I enjoy it. it. It gives me, it gives, it gives me joy. So, and then like, uh, the lens, so the lens is an old Konica, uh, lens, but you know, most, you know, most rangefinder lenses, they, it's only like prime lenses. This one has two different focal lengths on it. So it has a 30, 35 and a 21 on it. Ooh. Um, so it's been really cool to kind of play with. And I took it out um, the other day when yeah. I was shooting uh, St. Patrick's Day stuff. Nice. Oh, okay. Um, oh, okay. So I was shooting it around with that. And like, it's so sick. Like you can literally like, especially like during the daytime, mm -hmm. like you could put that 21 on mm -hmm. and crank it to like F11 and mm -hmm. just, just go shoot from the, the hip wow. or the chest or wherever you want to do it. Like yeah. you don't even have to like, you can focus more just on like catching moments and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So it's cool. I, I like this lens. I've been looking for it forever. And, um, I was telling, um, what was I telling? I think I was telling Aaron downstairs. I was like, yeah, I bought it like a month before <laughs> Jason from Grainy Days did <laughs> yeah. a YouTube video on it. And I was like, thank God. <laughs> I've been looking at this camera nice. for, I've been looking at this camera for six years and I finally decided to buy it like yep. a month before yeah. he put that video out. And, and of I was course, like, yeah. just, thank Boop. God. It's only like, yeah. I've yeah. only seen like five of them. In Jeez. general, wow. I'm sure it's a lot more of them, but like yeah. online for sale, like I usually was always seeing the same ones every time throughout Jeez. the throughout the couple of years. But I was so happy. I was like, I'll take it. It's like they're probably all gone now. Good time. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Or you know, or 10x the price. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Or that too. Or that too. Or exactly. That too. Okay. So rewind a little bit to like a week oh, yeah, and sorry. a half ago. Super off track. Um. Oh no no no. That, that's good stuff. That's perfect. The, no, <laughs> these, these are the rabbit holes we're going to go down. We're okay. going to be good. Um. You very generously came down to the Franklin premiere yes. of Moving Still, our, our feature documentary, yes. which we talked about in the last Congratulations to you episode. all, by the way. Thank you, man. Appreciate Fantastic. it. Fantastic. It really meant a lot to have you there because you are not only a close friend of the project, but also you are in the project as well. You are an interviewee uh, in the documentary, which was awesome. You got your uh, 
what is it, 45 seconds of fame? Maybe. Yeah, it was like a, a solid yeah. minute. Yeah. Let's go. No, you, yeah. you I, did not, no, I thought was I was good. just going to be like a blip, <laughs> like no, voiceover <laughs> while like Joe's running or something. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to be like, uh, this is going to be Joe's running. I'm like, oh yeah, Joe's cool, man. <laughs> and uh, I thought that was going to be it. But I had like a whole, yeah, I had like a whole blip. I had like yeah, a man. nice little scene. Yeah. The studio was in it. In your so studio, was, yeah. So yeah. Yeah. No, you guys did great. Yeah. Yeah, no, thank you for having me uh, down there. I definitely wanted to come. Like, I know I could have waited, but I wanted to come and see the premiere mm -hmm. uh, just because I knew, like, you know, everybody that was involved with mm -hmm. it and everything that was involved with it. Mm -hmm. um, I've been kind of following you guys for a while, a while in regards to just, like, you working on this, so I know how long. Like, everybody, you can't, <laughs> I mean, you can probably tell if you watch the documentary how long you guys have been working on it, but... You guys have been working a lot on it, and I know what goes, you know, behind, you know, you know, the struggles, the sacrifices, you know, everything that had to be done to to accomplish that. So, mm -hmm. uh, definitely want to come down and see that with you guys, the first one with you guys, mm -hmm. and also I'd never been down to Nashville before too, right. so um, want to come down and you know check it out. So no, but congratulations yeah. to you guys. Um, I loved it. I thought it was good. I thought it was great, um, especially for you guys' first feature length. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just to kind of see it evolve into what it became mm -hmm. was really cool. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just just like kind of just love that just like organic kind of storyline that kind of mm -hmm. went along with it. So super yeah. dope, super dope. Yeah, we appreciate you being there and also like participating in it as well. Like it really it meant a lot. And I think it helped kind of just flesh the story out in a really big way, which is great or a 60 second way, whatever, whatever you want to call it. But, um, no, it was, it was super cool. And, uh, you, you, the reason I say generously came down is because you had a, a pretty early flight the next day out to LA <laughs> yeah, at the red uh, eye. for a pretty, at the pretty red eye. awesome project. Um, I don't know how much you can speak on that. But oh, I can't I, talk about it can't at, all talk right at all right now. Okay, great, great, great. Cool, cool, cool. But it went well. Uh, yeah, it went well. Yep. It went, it went really well. I think it was definitely like, um, I don't, I wouldn't say it was the biggest thing I've ever done, but it was definitely probably the most responsibility I think I've had. Okay. Cause I just was how involved I was, mm -hmm. you know, I was basically the creative director, art director and mm -hmm. photographer for yeah. it, for a seeming, for a seemingly larger, fairly large campaign mm -hmm. or, or shoot and what I'm call it campaign. But, um, but yeah, I think everything went well. Uh, everybody on set was amazing. Cool. I uh, really, really, really loved my crew. And it was like my first time working with all of them. Cool. And they felt like I worked. It felt like I had like been on set with them like all the time, which is super strange because usually when I'm on set, it's with like a bunch of people from Chicago. Mm. So like I was like, man, I'm like the only person flying back to Chicago today. <laughs> I was like, that's weird. Like that's I'm, it's never it's never happened. So yeah. Um, but yeah, no, that shoot was fantastic. It'll probably be coming out in segments okay. throughout the year. Um, so yeah. Excited, to, excited cool. to excited to be able to talk about that a little bit more in the future. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Nice. And if you want to stay tuned on that, you can follow Nolis on Instagram at Nolis N O L I S. That's, yep. your, that's your full handle, right? Yeah, N O L I S. Yes. Yep. Yeah. That's my. It's my middle name, and it's my. Uh, it's my grandfather's first name. So oh, little, oh, history, little, little history behind that. Oh, that's so. awesome. Have you always gone by Nolis? No, not until okay. I got older. It, 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 uh, I guess I'm getting my government name. First name is Charles. <laughs> Uh, really? So, uh, you know, Charles isn't like the most uh, <laughs> standout of names or alias, I guess, aliases, I guess. Yeah. So when I kind of switched over and started doing photography as a career, mm -hmm. I started going by Nola's just because I think it just stood out a bit more and it For sure. just, you know, made more sense. So, yeah, totally. Yeah. No, but yeah, I didn't like it when I was younger, but I think it's cool now. Yeah, I like that. Uh, when you were in Franklin with us for the premiere, uh, I think you, you talked with my partner, Laura, for a little bit. Mm -hmm. And she told me afterwards, she was like, did you know that Nolis was a pharmacist? Did I tell her? Before? He was a photographer. Whoa, I had I did, no idea. I did not know that either. No. I had no idea. I want to know more about that. Yeah, origin story. Yeah, I, it's funny because I just got my degree. Like last year. Wait, what? really? Yeah. I like never Wait, went whoa, and picked what? it up when I, no, I never went and picked it up. Yeah. So I like finally, after like what? 10 years, I like finally went back and got it. <laughs> so it's like hanging up on my wall now. Sick. That's uh, awesome. Yeah. No. Um, yeah. But I mean, you know, when I was in, when I was in college, uh, like photography was never really like 
a thing for me when I was younger. Okay. Like I didn't really have like a artistic family or anything like that. So, but I was in the Chicago art scene okay. uh, since I've been a, like fifth since like 15, 16, something like that. Um, shout out leaders. Uh, I, you know, I got involved early on. Um, and, you know, I, I tried a bunch of things from an artistic standpoint, mm -hmm. but I think around the time I was like, you know, 2021, mm -hmm. I kind of got into photography just as like a hobby for fun. I went to like a pawn shop in like Wicker Park mm -hmm. and got me a film Canon Rebel XS for oh, like dang. 40 bucks. Nice. Something like yeah. that. Still got it somewhere. Yep. Uh, and I was like my first way of getting into like film photography. But um, so, yeah, so I was doing that as a hobby back at the time. Cool. But I was also taking like prerequisites in college. Okay. Um, so basically I was either going to become a I was either going to go to PT school okay. uh, or I was going to go to pharmacy school. Uh, pharmacy called me back first. So I ended up going to pharmacy <laughs> school. Uh <laughs> Which was which was which was fun, which was interesting. Um I had a lot of I had a lot of fun doing it. It was very hard, it was very difficult, but mm. um yeah, so I did that. Uh graduated from Doctor of Pharmacy and worked for about a year and a half, two years okay. as a pharmacist. And then uh kind of was like, you know, switching jobs. And in between that I just kind of had a lot of off time. So mm -hmm. I was just doing my photography as a hobby a little mm -hmm. bit more. Um, and, you know, like I said, kind of being in the art scene since I was younger, mm -hmm. you know, as I grew up and got older, so did everybody else. So I had, you know, I had some contacts and networks here. So I had opportunities to do different jobs and stuff like that. And after a while, I just kind of snowballed into what it is today. And, you know, it got to a point where I was just like, yeah, man, I'll just do it until I can anymore. And then I can always go back to, you know, the pharmacy stuff. But, you know, at this point it was like 10 years ago now. So yeah, no real going back. What's, um, what's the like start to finish time on pharmacy school? Seven years. Wow. Whoa. Dang. Yeah. What? So I did three years undergrad Okay. and four years pharmacy school. Yep. Dang. Yep. yep. Did that, did everything. Did, um, God, I'm it's so long. I don't even remember what this stuff's called, but, um, yeah, my last year I did my, my, what is it called though? Oh my God. I can't even remember no more. It's crazy. Sorry guys. <laughs> but I did the things where you go and yeah. you work in different pharmacy okay. categories and like in different pharmacy environments. Like, Oh, okay, so okay. I worked at like the university of Chicago for like okay. three, three or four months Weird. as a student pharmacist. And that was insane. <laughs> uh, that was one of the same things I've ever seen. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, I did the whole thing, yeah. did the whole round, graduated, worked, uh, worked at like retail pharmacy. Okay. Uh, not, it, it was kind of, it wasn't Walgreens, but it was like that retail kind of pharmacy. Yeah, so, yeah. and, um, shout out to my retail pharmacist. It's a lot harder than you think. Mm, yeah. We're not out, we're not, they're not in the back just popping pills. <laughs> they are making sure you are staying alive. And yeah. it is a lot of work that goes along with that. So be nice to them. Mm. They don't get a lot of credit. So I bet. dang, what was, um, when you transitioned from being a pharmacist to now being a photographer, did people or like your family and friends, were they like, oh, that makes sense? Or was it more like, oh, why are you doing that? Uh, <laughs> it, <laughs> it depends on who you're talking to. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I mean, like my dad is like, you know, very like traditional, you know, go to high school, go to college, get a good job. But, you know, also that comes from just, being a father, I'm his yeah. only son, mm -hmm. being a protector, I want to make sure I'm good. Mm -hmm. And I understand that. Um, so for him, it took a while. Okay. Uh, but eventually, you know, he came around. And it was funny how he came around because, like, it, it was like some jobs that I was doing, I was, like, making crazy money. Mm -hmm. But, oh, well, not crazy money. I was making a lot more money for, like, natural stuff. And then it was, like, the jobs that made him like go like, oh yeah, this is real. Mm, okay. Was like jobs that like I was getting paid nothing for. Like, <laughs> it was like, uh, <laughs> like when I like I think my first uh, New York Times okay. job. Yeah, uh, I love New York Times. New York Times, uh, <laughs> but they don't. I mean, they don't. Uh, it doesn't pay yeah. an astonishingly yeah, yeah, yeah. large yeah, amount of yeah. money. Yep. So, but you know, he saw me in the newspaper that yeah. he still reads yeah. every morning. Yeah. 
and you know to have you know my name which is his father's name yeah. in it and stuff like that was really cool for him and he I think he got a better understanding of that and like also he's like a big sports guy and I got a chance to shoot a Bulls game mm-hmm. and so I think my first time shooting a Bulls game so he was like yeah well, so you know I'm showing him the pictures and all that kind of stuff so so eventually he came around to it um my mom is my mom has been like an entrepreneur since she was 17 so she's always wow. done her own thing so uh no one has more <laughs> faith in me than yeah. my mom so no, she was 100 no, no, no. down for it so so I, it, everybody's down for it now i think it just you know took a while for some people so but no everybody's cool with it for sure yeah for sure was there like any like one distinct project that you remember showing your dad where he was like like i'm proud of you or like oh or like like he's good now or like any like like kind of like monumental moment that the uh, two of you had i mean like i said my dad's old school he's not really like i'm <laughs> super i'm proud of you kind of okay, guy okay. but i understand i know my dad i know my dad and he does things in his own yeah. way so like he'll go to like you know he'll stop by like you know the bar with his guys mm-hmm. and he'll like take the newspaper with him or like <laughs> he'll go and like tell all his friends about <laughs> being like I, I think I think it was when he was like he first started like he started bragging about me being a photographer instead of bragging about me being a, phot- a pharmacist cool. mm-hmm. I think that was when it was like okay cool. like he's yeah. finally kind of like understood it and yeah. kind of gotten over it to it so yeah so yeah so yeah no so yeah that's awesome dang dang that's so sick <laughs> yeah that was cool oh what about you guys? I don't know. I'm not supposed to be asking questions. You can ask. Were you guys you doing? Yeah. Were you, what were you guys doing before pharma, uh, uh, photography? You and I probably have very similar paths. I was a food scientist. A what scientist? Food scientist. Oh, sick. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So like uh, a heavy science background. Um, I thought that's what I was going to do for the rest of my life when I graduated at Michigan State. I did it for uh, like four years afterwards, and at some point in there, I started shooting weddings, and then started making more money from weddings. Uh, and then we moved here. And so that's kind of been the natural progression for me to start in that field um, that I, just like you, will never go back to. Mm-hmm. It's been eight years now since I held a job in the food world. Yeah. But yeah, that's what I was doing before. Nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I have uh, no uh, doctor or food or scientist, uh, <laughs> anything in my background at all. Um, my wife is a nutritionist. Yes. But, uh, oh, yeah. She's yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, no, I, uh, I went to school with like uh, communications and marketing in mind. So I was a com arts student. That was my bachelor's degree, four years there um, because my dad is in marketing. Similar to your mom, my dad's been like an entrepreneur his entire life. Mm-hmm. Um, so he's been working for himself since he was 15 uh, and, you know, he's, had a really successful marketing agency in upstate New York for the last like 40 years or so. Like that's basically been like the thing for him. So it's funny, like it, it was, it's kind of like a combination of, of what your mom and your dad were both feeling of like, we want what's best for you. Right. We just want to like protect you kind of thing. Right, right. But also like my mom too, like they both have like the entrepreneurial spirit in right. them. So like we do get it. We just want you to be secure. Exactly. Like, you're exactly. a boy yeah. kind of thing. Like we just want you to be taken care of, um, which is like totally understandable from any parent's perspective. But uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was, it didn't take like a ton of convincing. It was, it was kind of like a couple months of like, I graduated without a job. And then my dad was like, all right, so what's up? What's next? Like you, you said no to the only offer you got. So like why and, and uh, what's the plan? Mm-hmm. I was like, I'm going to take the summer to shoot some weddings. I'll be fine for the meantime, I'll apply to jobs. And that was like a good enough answer for him. <laughs> and uh, I did that for like, you know, four months. By the end of those four months, I had enough inquiries coming in for the next summer yeah. of weddings that I was like, hey, maybe instead of putting all this time into job searching, I'll take that time and just learn how to build a business instead and do that and like actually go out and seek other wedding couples and like build something for myself. And so then I like set a goal for myself. I was like, I'm going to book 20 weddings for the summer of 2018. Um, did that. And then <laughs> so I was many. like, hey, dad, like this is this is the number I hit. This is like the revenue I'll hit because of that number. He was like, you can charge that much for weddings? I was like, yeah. He's like, cool. All right. Yeah, yeah dude. Sounds great. Like that. I'm um, Yeah, great. That was like that was like the. I'm proud of you moment of just like, whoa, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All exactly. right. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's like, yeah, the I thing. got you. Yeah. The approval. Yeah. It's like, all right, you, you, you kind of know what you're doing. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's, that's cool. Yeah. The, appro- the approval moment is always yeah. what they, what they enjoy. So yeah. okay, sick. Yeah. Perfect. It was similar. Yeah. I mean, I'm Asian. So like my, 
My parents especially did not understand. They're like, yeah, yeah. I started college as an engineer, chemical engineer, mm -hmm. and they were super stoked on that. And then when I told them, hey, by the way, like, um, I'm gonna switch to food science. They're like, what is food science? And I told them, I don't know, but I will let you know when I figure it out and see how it goes. Um, and then to transition, that took a bit of convincing to my parents. I remember my parents, that phone call, uh, they were concerned. They're like, oh, it sounds so vague. Like, mm, can you find yeah. a job in that? And then I remember a few years later when I told my dad, hey, like, so, you know, that college degree I got, I'm going to stop using it mm. and I'm going to go be a photographer now. And I remember for years and years and years, my dad was so concerned about like my well-being, right. and I got married at 23 too. So just like, will you be able to provide? And then it was that exact moment too. When I told my dad, oh, I made this much money this year from weddings. He's like, oh, yeah, got it. You should keep doing that. That's, that's a good <laughs> idea. Yeah, it's working out. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, I do think like artists in general though, when you look at our demographic uh, in the world, it's a growing niche or genre of uh, a career path, especially with social media. But for years and years and years, that wasn't the case. And I think oh, yeah. sometimes it takes convincing people, almost like, what do you do? And even when people ask me now mm -hmm. um, about rally caps or like the documentary, it's still kind of hard to explain mm -hmm. to people. Like, mm -hmm. so when people ask me like, so what do you do for work? I'm like, well, I'm a photographer. Mm -hmm. not really a wedding photographer anymore, but like <laughs> I do video work, but I do social media, but I, and I shoot film uh, and we made this doc with some friends. So mm -hmm. it's like, it gets increasingly harder to describe to people mm -hmm. what exactly it is yeah. that we do for work. What would you say like you're, if someone's yeah, like, what's your like at a party, someone's like, oh, what do you do? Like yeah. what's your one liner that you would give I'd just say I'm a photographer. <laughs> it's yeah. the easiest it's to explain. Just, I just try to keep it as simple as I can. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I mean, yeah. cause it's just like, you know, I mean, unless it's like somebody that is, I guess in the same career path yeah. mm -hmm. or, you know, mm -hmm. if it's someone who's not really in the art space, I think it's just easier to say like, um, yeah, I'm a photographer, but mm -hmm. I'll, I'll say like, I'll add on to it. I won't just say I'm a photographer. <laughs> <laughs> I won't just one line, and then, one line and then walk away. But, you know, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm a photographer. Like, you know, I do a lot of, or I'll tell them like, I, I try to differentiate myself a little mm -hmm. bit because mm -hmm. when people think photographer they can just think of whatever they <laughs> it's want. true yeah uh so i was like yeah you know i'm a photographer you know i'll do you know i shoot commercials mm -hmm. i shoot uh editorials mm -hmm. like advertising stuff just kind of give them a more yeah. concentrated version of it yep. because you know if i don't then you know yeah people are gonna start asking mm -hmm. me to shoot their kids birthdays <laughs> and stuff like that. And I'm like, it's not God. like i'm like that's not the type of thing I, it's, it's different like <laughs> so um, so yeah, but yeah, yeah, I usually try to try to keep it as simple as I can. So, yeah. yeah. Do you ever have like moments like where you feel the need to like, like name drop any clients or like people mm -hmm. that you've worked with to kind of like either like prove your, or like prove the legitimacy of what you're doing or anything like that? No, no. not unless that's like a, not, not unless that's a, a agency or a client yeah. Yeah. contacting yeah. me for work. Pitching yep. or something. Uh, yeah. No, I'm not a big name dropper. Yeah. Uh, I don't even really like have which i get i get i get yelled at about i don't even really have like pictures with any of like the people that i've like shot before oh uh, like you and that person yeah okay. like you know a lot of times at the end of the day like uh, you know my my agent was just like we were, we were on set the other day at the shoot that i can't talk about <laughs> yeah. and they were like uh, <laughs> and they were like oh you know why don't you go get a picture i'm like i'm not about to go walk up to this guy and <laughs> ask him to hey, take a get picture yeah. with him i'm like that's not the point i'm like i just took a bunch of pictures of yeah, him I was like, yeah, yeah. so i've never really been like <laughs> super big like into like that type of thing yeah, yeah. um like even like here in local chicago um, like, uh, Chance, Chance the Rapper, yeah. huge artist, yeah. known Chance since I was 15, have yeah. shot with him a ton of times. Yep. Couldn't tell you, I don't think I've ever shot a, I don't think I've ever taken a selfie with him. Unfortunately, <laughs> you are my friend, but I don't think I've, I don't think I've ever taken yeah. a selfie for the, for the sake of to taking a selfie with yeah, Chance the Rapper. For sure. For I sure. would love to take a picture with Chance, my friend, but like, yeah. I've never, I've never really like done that or like. You know, that's not never that's never really been just a goal for so. But yeah, no, unless you're like a client, yeah, yeah, or you're reaching out for work and you need to see my portfolio, mm -hmm. I'm not usually name dropping. Yeah. So this is my personal curiosity, but for uh there are a lot of artists or photographers and filmmakers who listen to the podcast, but for someone who wants to get into your specific niche, like your genre of photography, as you're explaining, like 
editorial, even like fashion or like advertisement, what's some advice that you give to a photographer who maybe like us, maybe transitioning away from weddings or just getting onto the scene or just like any genre that's not what you do right now, what's some advice that you give to them? <sighs> to try to transition into a different, a different yeah. realm of photography. Oh God, it's so hard nowadays. Mm. Um, you know, just because like, I mean, you can be the best photographer in the world and, but you know, if, if you don't, you know, know, you know, where to go or who to talk to, mm. it's very, I think it can be pretty difficult to get into those certain lanes. Mm -hmm. Um, I think, you know, for me, I think for me, at least what I tell, like what I tell younger people, um, I tell them, I think the biggest thing I tell for younger people is to have a, or create a circle of like-minded mm -hmm. people mm. Yeah. and, and grow with them. Very yeah. similar to what you guys are doing here yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. at Creative Club. Um, I think that will take you far, farther than, you know, any photography tutorial or anything like that is, mm. You know, being around people that can help keep you motivated and drive you to, you know, do other things. And uh, those other people in your circle, mm -hmm. you know, might be in that field yeah. that you particularly want to get out to get into and reach out to. So um, like on my circle of friends, none of them are really like photographers, but mm -hmm. they're all in the art realm. They'll be, you know, graphic designers or just overall creatives or um videographers, things of that nature, but they always, you know, kind of keep things, you know, different and kind of keep me motivated to do more. But, um, I mean, back to the real question in regards to like jumping into a different category, I think you just have to really immerse yourself mm -hmm. and you just have to really, I mean, obviously immersing yourself and in creating a portfolio of that specific style of photography. Mm -hmm. So that way, if somebody reaches out to you or if you reach out to someone, you have that experience or yeah. like that portfolio to be able to showcase that work yeah. and, you know, be able to kind of take that step into it. Yeah. Um, sometimes it takes time, um, especially in the beginning. A lot mm -hmm. of times you might have to do some some free stuff just yeah. so you can, you know, get that work in your portfolio mm -hmm. uh, so that when the real jobs do come, mm -hmm you know, you have something to back, back it up with. Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, I think it's, I think it's difficult. It takes, it takes time. Yeah. Um, you know, people, people like look at me and be like, how, Oh man, like, how did you get into that? I'm like, yeah. man, this is 10 years, yeah. mm -hmm. 10 years of work, mm -hmm. 10 years of shooting, 10 years of failing, 10 years of succeeding, mm -hmm. 10 years of networking, yeah. uh, you know, meeting vast amounts of people like, I've had people that have like reached out to me that I like hadn't talked to in years or something like that and be like, oh man, got this thing, blah, 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 blah. So, I mean, it, it takes time and it takes, it just takes a lot of patience. So, um, but yeah, I think just doing what you have to do to get your portfolio together to be ready for when that yeah. moment comes, I think is probably the biggest thing. For sure. And then, um, and you know, just being nice yeah. and, and, I, it goes a very long way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and just trying to network organically. Mm -hmm. I think it's a big thing with like networking organically and trying to force a network. Mm. Uh, you know, you make sure it's something yeah. that makes sense to uh, both parties. Mm -hmm. You know, so um, so I think so. Everybody feels like they're getting something out of it. So, sure. so yeah, I think that's big thing. I, I think I heard you say this, but uh, do you work? You said you work with a manager or, or someone also to like help like a on the client front uh yeah nowadays yeah, yeah. like okay. on some of my bigger jobs yeah um they'll help me out okay. just in regards to just like um the whole the logistics yeah and like okay. the finances and yep. like getting crews together and stuff like that for like the bigger things for sure that way i can focus more on uh the creative mm. my relationship with the client mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you know make sure i'm expressing kind of what i want to do with mm -hmm, them and sure. be, be focusing on being basically the photographer yeah or the creative director of of the assignment yeah. um because i mean yeah I, I mean and i still do i mean i still do it you know myself on uh on other projects mm -hmm. where i'm 
I'm the photographer, mm-hmm. I'm the producer, I'm like <laughs> Everything. this, that, I'm the scout. <laughs> um, so I still do that all the time, but okay, I think yeah. if it's just like some bigger campaigns cool. where, you know, sometimes you just can't do everything by yourself and you need totally. more people to be efficient. I think that's where they come in and kind of help me out. So um been great. It's been yeah. great. No, that's cool. That's, I, I only ask because that's something I think, again, like there's so much of the, I think, just broadly speaking, commercial space, if you will, is like so foreign to us, but we're trying to just get a little more acquainted mm-hmm. with it to like know the right moves to make because like we, we've, we've also been like in the industry for so long. Like it's just a matter of like kind of taking the right principles from previous types of photography and like mm-hmm. carrying some of them over, mm-hmm. but then also just learning new terminology and like different types of networking and how jobs are won and like all these different things. And it's all, very uh, foreign, yep. honestly. Yeah. And we're just trying to like figure it out. Well, I think the biggest thing for me in the last two years is learning how to write a, make a deck. Okay. Learning how to yeah. make creative decks. Okay. That is vital. Okay. Apparently. Okay. And <laughs> <laughs> something I am not great at. Something I am not great at. So, yep. Okay. Uh, it, but it's been a work in progress. I've been putting more effort into learning how to like make decks to help better explain my vision. Okay. I think, and that's kind of like the main point of the decks is like when people sent their, like, yeah, like this uh, previous client just was like, yeah, we want to do this. Mm. Just like make up three ideas and show us. (laughs) And I'm like, what? Uh, And and so, yeah, so I had to make a deck and have three different scenarios. I have to explain the vision behind each one, okay. the symbolism. Whoa, okay. I have to explain the lighting. I have to explain, you know, I have to have examples of posing and what I would do and like kind of everything that kind of helps come together to just, they, you have to, you have to be able to, to visualize the shoot mm-hmm. to them. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's what kind of comes with that. And it's not easy. And there are people that are very, very good at it. Um, so I just do my best to kind of learn from them. So for sure. Yeah. Do you use like past examples of your own portfolio to like in, as visuals in those decks? Yeah, oh, I yeah, steal yeah. everybody's yeah. decks. If okay. I get, if I get a, uh, yeah. if I get a deck or like, uh, like a client or something like that, yeah. I don't steal them, yeah, but yeah. I, st- I like, I will definitely look at it and yeah. see yeah. the, the skeletons or like the template of kind of how they organize everything, mm-hmm. like their flow. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, that's a good idea. That's mm-hmm. a good idea. I can implement that into my flow for like future things or like, that's oh, that's a good way to explain it. Or that's a good kind of like pathway to go. And so like, oh, I should start with this and then start with mm-hmm. this, um, things like that. So I'm, I always definitely take um, different things from, from, from different, you know, situations that I've gotten over the years. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, I have like a folder on my computer. It's just decks. <laughs> yep. And okay. I'm just looking at it. I'm just like, if I need to like, oh, like, oh, this is a good one for like a sports thing or this mm-hmm. is a good one okay. for like okay. a yep. lookbook thing or yeah. like product based thing. I'm like, oh, maybe I can I can see this and I can see a way that I can, you know, kind of rework mine a little bit to 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 to, to for it to better make sense for the specific product that I'm, that mm-hmm. I'm shooting. So, yeah, that's cool. Hey. On the, um, I guess, continuing my earlier question and you were referencing like, oh, the advice that you give the younger people, younger artists. But on the other side of that spectrum, when you think about um, like your career so far and where it's headed about like specifically like sustainability and longevity, do you ever think about not even like this could be like aspirations too for your career, but do you ever think about how you're going to be able to elongate your career 10, 20 years from now as an artist? Um, Yeah. You think about that all the time, man, especially with, you know, all of like the, just the the advancements of technology yeah. and um, AI and like all that kind of stuff. So I think you just have to be mindful of what's to come. Um, I don't think photography or videography will you know ever disappear, but some aspects of it might not be as um, profitable to invest in. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. In certain situations, so. You know, that's why, you know, I'm always been keen on like never putting all of my, you know, eggs in one basket. Um, I think like with like Instagram and like influencer stuff, um, I think it's great to have, but I don't think it should be like 
what you're so focused on. Like that's never been my personal soul focus. I've always been more about like, yeah, like it's like the, the, the campaigns, the corporate mm-hmm. campaigns and like the bigger, like the advertising, mm-hmm. things like that. I think it's, I think it's good to have both. Yeah. Just that way you can just diversify things. So that's that, that way, just in case things go south, mm-hmm. you know, you still have other, you know, means of, you know, survival in your industry. Like, mm-hmm. you know, if, something happens and Instagram gets hacked yeah. or goes yeah. down, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, and is gone for a month or two. That's two months of, you know, two months of, you know, m- you know, money that you've lost. Mm-hmm. So you want to be able to still be able to do other different other things and in, in the same industry. So and and, you know, I think I've been getting a little bit more into the whole like uh, creative directing a little bit more. I've definitely been, I think in control of more projects recently or had more say so on like the creative like yeah. concepts of it, which has been cool. Yeah. So I've been kind of adding that uh, to my profile as well. Yeah. Um, people always, always saying they like, should, I should like direct like videos and stuff mm. like that. Mm. And I'm like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it's yeah. something that I'm still, lo- it's, 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 you know, it's always yeah. just something in the back of my head that I'm like thinking about. Um, so yeah, I keep that stuff in mind and just, mm. You want to be mindful like about those things like you know 10 to 20 years i me personally would love to be at the point where i'm doing like larger campaigns mm-hmm. um like to the point where i can do like four or five a year mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. and that's and then everything else can be just like my own like personal yeah. personal projects yep. um so yeah like I, I mean i know like you know i don't need to be like uh, you know, I don't mean to be super, super rich or making like crazy, crazy amounts of money. Mm-hmm. I just want to do like four or five projects in a year to a point where I can be comfortable yeah. and then I can focus on like, you know, everything else. So yeah. I think that's kind of my personal goal. Cool. Uh, and kind of where I want to be is, you know, I think I've gotten away from like the, I am a workaholic. I do work a lot, mm-hmm. but I know, I know I won't be able to do it forever. So I want to mm-hmm. get to a point where I can be able to like, sustain my work-life balance yeah, and be sure. able to kind of like, kind of like e- e- even both sides of that out. So, yeah. Mm. That's cool. Do you see yourself at any point in the near future, like only creative directing a project and take like hands off camera kind of thing and you're just kind of communicating with whoever the yeah, photographer is? Yeah, that'd be is. sick. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be sick. That's easy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that'd be sick. I'm down with that. Yeah, and I have a lot of like, you know, I have like some younger guys uh that have been like helping me out and assisting me like over the past mm, yeah. uh few years. They're starting to get kind of into it a little bit deeper. So um yeah, I would love to do something. I don't have to like hold the camera for a while. That'd yeah. be sick. More yeah. like a like a director and DP relationship almost. You're like, yeah. all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I can never do the DP thing. I can direct. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> can never do a DP thing. Yeah, like I and because I've been on set and I've seen a DP, I've seen I've seen all of that and they're hardcore man. I got my respect for them man. I seen a guy getting a, like a sewer <laughs> with a oh. with the camera. He had like the little um, oh yeah. the little what is it? The little red dragon. Oh, the photo, photo. Yeah, 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 yeah. Smaller yeah. one. I don't know anything about video cameras. Um, the smaller joints. He yeah, had like the that. smaller joint. He okay. I won't say it's a sewer. It was a. <laughs> I was like, I need more it was a, it was a manhole. Okay, okay, okay. Where they do like the electricity and stuff. Okay, okay. Not like a full fetched okay. sewer. My bad. <laughs> but he got uh, he got into like a manhole and was like in there. That's why doing like the thing. And I'm like, yeah, I don't want to do that. <laughs> so, yeah, no, thank you. I, mean, I, I respect for him. I was like, I don't want to do that. So I, yeah, I'd rather be the guy. In the back, yeah. telling him yeah, what yeah. to do with the headphones yeah, on. Like, yeah, yeah, no, that screen. looks great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just stay there yeah. a little get, longer. Get in there, get yeah. in there deeper. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that dude. I want to be that dude. So yeah, I could definitely probably I could see myself doing that. I think that would be a cool. Um, I think that would be a fun thing to get into. But you know, I always have this mentality that I'm just like never. I'm like I'm never done mm. getting getting better at photography yeah. mm-hmm. and I'm like, man, if I get into directing, then it's just going to shift me away from photography, mm-hmm. photography, and I'm going to lose my touch. Like I always kind of have like that thought. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, I've always been like iffy about getting into it, but it's definitely something to consider. Yeah, but, for yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, going back to the, the kind of uh, community component we were talking about, you're saying earlier about like surrounding yourself with the right people and organic 
networking and just find like the right group of people to kind of like rise up with. Um, we mentioned in the intro that you have a wonderful studio in Chicago, South Facing Windows. Um, you are one of three co-founders of that space. Could you give uh, listeners just like a little more context of when that started and who your two co-founders are? Yeah, so it's me, it's um, Alina Savor and uh, Michael Salisbury. We have a studio in Bridgeport, it's called South Facing Windows. Oh, when did we start? We opened it up like, we opened it in 2019, which okay. is crazy because we like never had like a grand opening <laughs> at all. We never had any type of like opening party. We were all so busy. But um, yeah, we opened in like 2019. Like I was just shooting out of my house okay. in my back room mm -hmm. and uh, and like Alina and Mike are partners. So they had like a studio in their house okay. and then at some point you know you know Alina was just telling me about how she was looking for a studio space and um eventually it just kind of turned into us collaborating on the space which is something we both mm -hmm. we all all three of us need it yeah. and um yeah and we found South Face of Windows and you know uh, it was like right around 2019 so um it was pretty cool because that was kind of like when like the protests and stuff was happening like the George Floyd protests mm -hmm. and all of those things. So um, it was kind of crazy because like you know as soon as we started, that happened, and we just kind of went straight into it. Mm -hmm. So we did like we start like we start, like in the first month or two of us even being opening, we started this um, this program for the summer and it was called for the free, mm -hmm. and it was a basically an opportunity to give. Uh, black creatives uh, free studio hours mm -hmm. to kind of do whatever they wanted. Because I think at the time it was just like uh, it wasn't a lot of work going on. It was yeah. something else going on too around the time of Joy Floyd. But yeah. it wasn't a lot of work for creatives around that time. Mm -hmm. And then also just with all of the process and stuff going on, we just wanted to have a space for people to just kind of take their minds off of everything, yeah. be creative or, you know, if they needed a studio to get work. Yeah. Yep. to help pay for things because yep. it was slow around that time. Um, so we ended up starting to do that. And then that was crazy because we did that for the whole summer and it was insane. Like people were like every day. I think we did like over like a hundred something hours oh, of man. studio time. Wow. And um, wow. So I think it was really helpful for the city, but at the same time, on accident, it also, I think, gave us a bigger platform. Okay. I think a lot of people started knowing about us more because so many people okay. were in there yeah. shooting yeah. and, like, telling everybody else. And then I think that eventually led into our air residency program that we have now. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. So now yeah. every month we have an artist come in and we give them free hours to work on a specific project. And we try to help promote them and showcase them and put them out yeah. on all our yeah. social media platforms and stuff like that. So, um so yeah, so like the studios definitely like, you know, we try to definitely keep community in mind, uh, you know, while we also try to, you know, <laughs> keep it afloat at the same time. So <laughs> we, we do that, but we also still kind of rent, rent it out and yeah. stuff like that as yeah. well. So it's like an interesting <laughs> balance. Like we're trying to like keep the place afloat, but we also want it to still be for, you know, the people and like the younger artists to come in and be able mm -hmm. to do stuff. So, so it's been interesting. So yeah, so uh, this will be like our fifth year. Yeah. <laughs> something like that and uh yeah still been going great yeah still been going fantastic so happy to keep it going yeah i've always admired the uh the residency program that you guys do i think it's like such a cool way to like again like give platforms <laughs> to other people and like resources that most people do not have access to mm -hmm. also right, right. like it, it is like that's a common question that we get is like oh you know I'm so-and-so from a small town. I'd love a studio space, but I don't have anyone to do something like that with, and I can't afford a lease on a place if it's just me. Um, and so to be able to come in and give someone a month, like, for them to just come in, like, that's a huge boon for them. Like, that makes such a huge difference in their work. Yeah, it's been um, pretty cool. It's been cool. People have been very pretty, uh, you know, thankful for it as well. And um, We had a lot of cool people, and we've met a lot of cool people yeah. uh, at the same time. So yeah. yeah, it's been really interesting. Do you or Alina or Michael ever like collaborate with the artist in residency for the month or like, is it just kind of like, you know, you can use the space, do your thing. You have the X amount of hours. We usually or... let them just do their thing. Cool. Uh, 
you know, we we have our own <laughs> uh, ventures that we're into. So <laughs> a lot of the times we're like running all over the place ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a studio manager now, Lena. Okay. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, so she kind of helps us a lot cool. with like booking rentals or like, you know, if, you know, if we need to go in and, and help out with the air residents and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, she'll come in and help out a lot. But we also still come in. Like I'll still come to the studio mm -hmm. and and you know, let the air residents in if it's their first time and show them around. And we do a, we do a whole portrait session with them. So like when you see the so photo, cool. when you see the photos of them on like our our, our Instagram or something like yeah. that, that's probably me or Alina that that probably oh, that's awesome. uh, shot them for that. So yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's been cool. So yeah, we still definitely try to you know be present and and interact. But it's definitely like it's definitely gotten to the point where like I don't even know like half the stuff that's going on in the studio. <laughs> Somebody was like, oh yeah, I was well, at the studio day. I was like, oh, uh, cool. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Congrats. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Congrats. Uh, no, it, it's, it's a tough, the, managing a studio is like, is no joke. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's a lot of work. That's something we've talked about a lot, even on the, the show lately, but especially like just internal conversation with the other co-owners at Creative Club and other um, people that rent from us. It's like, it's, it's exciting to see things grow but it also means just like adapting and learning and making more mistakes and just trying to figure out how to like scale all those things in yeah. a sustainable way. Yeah. And uh, yeah, keeping, keeping the studio afloat for real. Like that's, def that's definitely how we feel most months is like, it is not, yeah. it is not easy. <laughs> yeah. It's not easy. Yeah. yeah ours transparent, full transparency. It's not necessarily profitable. So no. like, no. it's not like no. we're all, all like <laughs> no. living off of the studio. It's in, yeah, it's, it's that it's, we keep it afloat just enough for like us to be able to maximize it ourselves, yep. Yeah. but it's not this machine that just generates money for no. us. Absolutely. No. Yeah, absolutely not. No. Usually the money that we get just goes right back into the studio. Yeah, yeah. So. Us too. That's exactly yeah. the same for us. So yeah, it's just, you know, we, we just wanted to, it, and it was, that was never to go to like make a super profit off mm -hmm. of it. It was just yeah. mm -hmm. having a space for, for uh, people to come in and work, but also a space for us to be able to have our own projects. Like yeah. me having the studio has gotten me so many jobs yeah. over the winter time yep. specifically. Like, yeah, people, I'm like, oh yeah, I already got a space. That'd be mm -hmm. cool. That's something we don't got to pay for a suite. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're top of the list. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure Everything. for like so those, those pitch decks too, you know, it's like, Hey, locations taken care of kind of thing. Yeah, it's like, that's, yeah, that's, exactly. that's, a, that's a huge selling point. Yeah. For yeah, sure. yeah, exactly. So, yeah. I mean, just having that is, is it just has multiple benefits mm -hmm. in its own right. So yeah, 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 man, that is so cool. I love, yeah. The, the community focus is something that uh, we're, we're trying to jump back into. I think mm -hmm. this year we're just trying to like host more events and like do more like free things for yeah. people just like, Gathers oh. into the fold. Do you guys know about the thing we're doing? No. Uh, Thursday? Is it this week? Yeah. Yeah. This week? It's like yeah. Thursday. We're just doing like a, a happy, hour happy hour at the studio. Yeah. Oh, sick. That's so like fun. four to seven. We're just doing like oh. a happy hour and just gonna have people come by. So sick. we never do stuff like that. I was but we say, need yeah. to though. Just yeah. because we're man, we're just so all over the place. Us too. We never yeah. can like come together yeah. for like a like it's rare to see me, Mike, and Lena in the same Almost. room <laughs> at the same time. Because we're usually so all over the place doing yep. stuff. So yep. Um, I think we finally were just like, we're just like, we're just going to do it. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of it had to do with Lena. Lena has been very helpful with just kind of like being able to do stuff like that. And, yeah. You know, kind of with when, when we we're all running around too like that. So yeah. So yeah, yeah. We're doing a little happy hour Sick. this that Thursday and we're going to try to, we're going to try to do more stuff like that. Yeah. Oh, and then like, and then we're going to probably do another, um, we're going to probably do another thing with, uh, with Flynn, the, uh, Oh wait! Oh, the tin type. Oh, oh. The yeah. tin type. Ooh, yeah. I want to. Okay. Yeah, we missed the last. We so missed we're last gonna, one. We're gonna do yes. another tin type print this summer too. Okay. So that, we're gonna we're gonna have that going too. Was that last so year? That you guys did that? that? I believe sure. it was last year. So yeah. we're, we're definitely gonna do another one. He yeah. he reached out to us. He's from Michigan. Oh, sick! We'll be there for that one. So yeah, so he reached out. So we're definitely gonna do another one yeah. uh, this summer. So a lot of people cool. liked that last time. So we're definitely Dude, gonna do it again. I think I feel like we were like on a dock trip or something. Yeah, you guys were. Yeah, we were traveling. I think we were traveling. That's when we Eric and the you guys are. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So bummed. I was like, I've wanted a tin type for it sounds so incredible. long, like that. Yeah, that that for sure. No, yeah, it was super cool. Still got still got mine hanging up in the house. I I feel like there's got to be some kind of uh, south facing and creative club collaborative oh, event at some sick. point this this summer. Like some either like a photo walk. I or was like to say something yeah, like city, a photo walk like or something. Some kind of thing like some that'd be fun. Like hosted by two studios in the city, kind of thing. Would that'd be, be fun. Would be really cool. That'd be cool. Yeah, yeah that'd be fun. Yeah, we could definitely we could talk about that. Definitely yeah, get that going. Just more community stuff, man. Like it really. I, like a, a phrase I've really latched onto as of late is uh, a rising tide raises all ships. Mm. Just like trying to like raise the tide for like those around you and like get everybody up and like just moving and 
like you said earlier, it's just like find the, find the group of people you want to be together and like come up with. And then how do you use that for those around you that are strangers or like beginners or whoever it is, like just trying to like raise the tide for everybody because right. everybody wins. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's, it's opportunities for everybody. I think mm-hmm. you just have to, you know, find, find, find those opportunities and also just, you know, be able to, I think you just have to be the type of person that can be just more supportive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I've definitely like gotten like I've gotten emails where I've like um, couldn't do it, mm-hmm. but I never end it with just like I can't do it. Mm-hmm. It's just like I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm not available, mm-hmm. but I know these other photographers that yeah, are yeah. available or like I've had a job. Somebody, I remember somebody reached out to me about a job. I'm like, I'm like, there's no way like. I'm the best person to shoot this. <laughs> it was like a, it was like a, it was like a women's underwear. For, I'm like, why are you reaching out to me about this? <laughs> so I'm like, here's a bunch of women photographers that I think would <laughs> yep. be much more suited for this project mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, type of situation. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's, it's, so yeah, I'm always, you know, I'm never trying to, I'm always trying to get somebody mm. an opportunity mm. and somehow some way like you know if it's an assistant or if it's photo work mm. um just at least in my emails like, i'm always trying to make sure i'm just like throwing opportunities for yeah. you know other people in the city so yeah 100 percent, man we've talked a lot about uh past a lot of future ideas a lot of what's going on currently what's like um near future like uh, any projects coming up in 2024 that you're excited about that you can talk about or just ones that you're excited about and can't maybe or um the biggest thing that i can't talk about <laughs> <laughs> but i can say that i might be in i might be in paris in july Ooh. for the olympics whoa so whoa might be something cool for that okay if you know still not fully greenlit but mm, for sure for sure that's probably one of the cooler things that i would probably do oh, this year that'd be incredible so whoa okay that's awesome so yeah so we'll wait and see for now okay so if All you right. don't see anything you know, <laughs> okay <laughs> i got outbid probably <laughs> That's awesome, man. Thank you so much for, for taking time. To no, just, thank like, you, man. Appreciate chat, you guys man. having me. Yeah, and congratulations again on yeah. the documentary, thank guys. You. It was great. Thank you, bro. Thanks for being a part Go of watch it, Moving Stills. <laughs> awesome. Well, uh, thanks again to Nolis for joining us on this episode of Rally Caps. If you enjoyed the episode, uh, please follow the uh, show. Follow the show on Spotify. <laughs> um, you know, Like, subscribe to the YouTube channel if you're watching it on YouTube right now. I've never said um, that before. Uh, bro. <laughs> It gets uh, surprisingly harder to say that over and over like again. Like and subscribe. I've never like said that. Like and subscribe, before in my man. Life. It's um, it just rolls off the tongue now. But um, yeah, leave a rating for the show on uh, either Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts from. The more ratings mean the better uh, distribution and the more mm. popularity. And we just want to get these conversations out to more and more people. <laughs> I love this so much for Nolis right now. That's. <laughs> That camera is, bro, that's sick though. What the, that's awesome. I love, oh my gosh, we're framing both of those. Um, Thank you all for being here. Thank you, Nolis, for joining us. Thank you. And follow Nolis on Instagram socials. All will be in the description. Check out his work. And uh, we'll talk to you in the next episode. Peace. Peace. Bye.